All right, guys, welcome back to part three of our Rivals of Exelon set review. Today we're going over the black. Be sure to check out the white and the blue and the red and the green and the artifact and the gold and the land and whatever. Uh, they'll all be here. And uh, so, uh, yeah. So, Arterial Flow is the first black card. Three mana. Each opponent discards two cards. So this is already an upgrade on Mind Rot, which is target opponent discards two cards. Now it's each opponent. Already an upgrade. If you control a vampire, they also each opponent also loses two life and you gain two life. So one thing I always expect from this is that it's tendrils and it's not tendrils, right? So if you have three opponents, if you're playing like a commander match, and I'm like, you lose two life, you lose two life, you lose two life. Six life. And then I'm like, I gain six life, right? Because I, I expect that symmetry. And then instead you just gain two life. And I'm like, well, that's weird, but you lost six life. Aren't I gaining that? So... You lost two life worth of blood. You lost two life worth of blood, and you lost you blah, 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 lost two life worth of blood. But I only gained I only gained two life worth of blood, so that doesn't really make any sense. Other than that, uh, this card is if you're gonna play Mind Rot, which has definitely been a sideboard card for certain black decks in in standard. Um, I think you just play this card. Uh, I think it's fine. It's uh, it's also just mind rot with upside. So, eh, it is what it is. It's not super exciting, but it is just a, a great, it's a solid three mana discard spell. So, canal monitor. You can't have canal monitor without, uh, well, you know where this joke is going. Yeah, same place the canal monitor is going, really. Champion of Dusk. Three black, black for a 4-4. Four, four. I like this card from the art. I don't know what this card does. It's a 4-4 four, four for 5, which is fine stats in my book. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and you lose X life for X number of vampires you can draw. Oh, this card's fantastic. Oh, this is great, dude. So if I got two other vampires, if I even have two vampires, I draw three, lose three. Oh, this. Even if you control no other cards, this guy is just Phyrexian Rager. 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Rager. I like this card a lot. I'm a big fan of this card. This is a card that would that could definitely see a, a role play a role in the vampire deck. It could be like a centerpiece. This could be like one of the most powerful cards in the deck, but it will never break more than a dollar, I think. This is not like there's it's, there's certain rares in magic that are like, you know, no matter how much play this card sees, no matter how good it is, it's not gonna be a chase rare. This is like like Aetherling, Pearl Lake Ancient. These were cards that were dominant in their control decks, in their respective control decks. There was they were four ofs or they were two ofs or but they were in the tier one control decks and they never broke more than a dollar. You know? So um it's really interesting because then you have other other mythic cards that don't see a ton of play, but they're like 30 bucks. And you're like, what this doesn't even make any sense. So uh yeah, this card seems great. I like I like this card a lot. You're gonna you're gonna play it in limited, you're you're hopefully gonna play it in constructed, and um yeah, this card's good. Dark Inquiry, three mana. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-land card from it, and they discard it. So this is just coercion. This is literally coercion. Right? Same card. Dark Inquiry, coercion. Just a functional reprint. Another. So we have claustrophobia and coercion in this set, and we also have like several Ixalan cards that were not even functional reprints, actual reprints in this set. So, meh. Dead Man's Chest. I like this card. Two mana. Enchant creature and opponent control. So I put it on your 4-4. Four, four. When that creature dies, exile card is equal to its power from the top of its owner's library. So exile four cards. You may cast non-land cards from among them for as long as they remain exiled. And you may spend mana as over any mana. This is kind of like a Gaunti. Where you're like, okay, I'll put it on your 5-5. Five, five, I'm going to kill it anyway. But it's kind of like drawing five cards, right? And just ignoring the non-lands. So if you exile a four drop and a five drop and a two drop, then you just get to play those for as long as they remain exiled using any mana. So they're basically like cards in your hand. Um, so if you're going to kill the creature anyway, like it's going to be a one for one, right? So then by putting this on the creature first and then killing it, it's still a one for one with the creature. But then this just this dead man's chest just trades for the cards that you remove from the top. So as long as you don't hit. 
as long as you hit more than one spell. Like if you, even if you hit one spell, you're breaking even. But as long as you hit two spells, it's just a draw two. Because the cards are essentially in your hand. They're exiled. You can play them for as long as they remain exiled. And uh, that's probably for the rest of the game. So it's basically just drawing two. Um, the only stipulation to this card is that they have to have a creature and it has to be big enough uh, that you actually want to kill it. So I like this card. I think it's cool. Um, I think it seems like a trap at first, but if you actually uh, look at it as... Right, in theory, this card does nothing, but in theory, like... Yeah, I mean, not even in theory. In functionality, it does. It doesn't do... It doesn't do anything either. Like, you put it on a guy, and then it does nothing. But if your goal is to kill their creatures, it does something. I think this is a cool card. <sighs> Dinosaur Hunter. Uh, legendary creature, Turok. That's a little Turok humor there. Two mana for a 2-2. Whenever it, it deals damage to a dinosaur, destroy that. Oh. So it just... I wonder if this would be functionally the same if it said death touch against versus dino death touch uh to dinosaurs. Chris Furter, do you see any problem with it saying death touch to dinosaurs? Isn't that the same functionally? I don't know. I like that. I like when they um I like when they uh like shorten things, like they use that kind of truncated templating. Instead of having this clunky, like, when Death Touch deals damage to a dinosaur, destroy that creature. Like, Death Touch to Dinosaurs isn't a keyword, that's right. Um, but, you know, giving your spells, like, Soulfire Grandmaster says your spells, your sorceries and instants have lifelink, right? It doesn't say gain life whenever your sorceries and instant spells deal damage. It gives them lifelink, right? So this could say Death Touch against dinosaurs versus dinosaurs. And I think that, I think that gets the point across clearly enough that you know what it's doing. And then it's like less verbose. So, I don't know. I like that better. I think this card is... It blocks Carnage Tyrant. It kills... This 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 little... This Mother Trucker right here. This 2-2 Mother Trucker kills a Carnage Tyrant. I'm intrigued by that. I want to hear this guy's story. Where's this? What's this guy seen? I, the foul beast, chomped me, but I got away. You'd best believe when I find it again, it won't get away. So e how did it get away? You kill any dinosaur that you deal damage to. So you don't kill him, I guess. Anyway. Dire Fleet Poisoner. I like 2-2 two, two for 2. When it's, I like rare 2-2s two, for 2 because I'm always like, you're going to have some cool abilities. Flash and Death Touch are uh that was before he was a dino hunter okay that makes sense i got you uh flash and death touch when dire fleet poisoner enters battlefield target attacking pyro you control get plus one plus one gains and gains death touch okay so this can either block and kill something or you can either play it during combat and give one of your attackers death touch and kill something okay i like that um yeah, again, like, this is just another, like, as long as the pirates keep having these these cool, rare, like, really versatile tools, like this one, like the one that makes a blocker 01, um, like, I think they're they're going to be a deck. Like, this is cool. Like, you can play four of this guy, four of the 2-1 flyer, four hostage taker, and these are all, like, these all do a lot of things. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on. And it's a lot to play around. <laughs> like, make your Scarab got an 01 that loses all abilities, and then, like, you could just kill it, right? Like, you attack with the 2-1 flyer, make their Scarab got an 0-1, it loses ability, so it's no longer able to return to your hand, and then you could just kill it with something, which is super cool. So, yeah, I mean, this card is very versatile. I, I like that this card is able to be used on offense and defense, because that's, that's, that's pretty strong. Dusk Charger. You don't even need Magma Spray specifically. Scarab got Magma Spray. You don't even need Magma Spray. You can just kill it with anything because it's just going to not going to return, right? Because it doesn't have... It doesn't have that line of text that triggers. Or does it... Or is it a... Is it a Scarab God when it's still in the graveyard? Does that trigger go on the... I don't know how that works. That's really confusing. Because the trigger might happen when it hits the graveyard. And at that point, it could be a Scarab God again with the ability. I don't know. Three mana, four, four. Yeah, it might trigger from the graveyard. I don't know. That's confusing. But either way, Magma Spray. Then we'll Magma Spray it then. 
Uh, three mana, four, four, sorry, four mana, three, three. If you control ten or more, city's blessing. Dust courage gets plus two plus long as long as you have the city's blessing. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play a, a situational in constructed. I'm not gonna play a situational five five. That's only a three three. That's only a hill giant most of the time. Uh, in limited, you'll probably play one of these because I think it's a lot easier to get the city's blessing in limited. Dusk Legion Zealot. Uh, two mana for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose a life. I mean, I like drawing cards. I don't like losing life, but I like having... I like amassing vampires. So if you're going to give me a 2-1... Two, two, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one that draws me a card that gets all of the other vampire perks, yeah, I'll take that. Sure. Fathom Fleet Border. Three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, you lose two life unless you control another pirate. This is, I mean, this is a no-brainer. You're, oh, you're probably gonna have a pirate if you're playing this in constructed. I don't know if a three-three for three, um, is actually gonna be good enough. Limited, you're probably gonna play it a lot. Constructed, TB, TB, TBD. Forerunner of the Coalition, three mana for a two-two. When forward of the coalition enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a pirate card, reveal it, and shuffle your library and put it on top. So, again, we're just putting the card on top. This is literally the vampire equivalent of that 2-2 vampire. Whenever another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses life. So this is the same card. Instead of giving plus one, plus one, you lose a life. But you're both 2-2 two, two for three of your specific tribe. You find a card of your specific tribe, you put it on top. Meh. I mean, this is just Treefolk. Yeah, this is just Treefolk Harbinger. This is just... Uh, Flamekin Harbinger. This is just the, the Harbinger version of all those cards from, from Lorwyn that we're getting the, the Tree Folk and putting on top of your library, the, the Elemental and putting on top of your library. Whatever. Ain't nobody got time for that. Golden Demise. One black black. All cre uh, This card is... Thumbs up. Maize215 with the sub. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the Soul Tie Brood. You are awesome. Really appreciate it. Golden Demise. One black, black. Uh, all creatures get negative two, negative two until the end of the turn. Okay, so it's literally Infest, which is fine. Infest is a playable card. But if you have the City's Blessing, only creatures your opponent's control get negative two, negative two until the end of the turn. So, um, yeah, that's strictly better. In case you guys didn't know. I mean, it's not strictly better because maybe you got creatures you want to die. It's very, it's much, it's much better though. Let's, let's put it that way. It's much better. Anyway... This card's cool. I like this card a lot. Um, when you have a card like Infest or Flaying Tendrils um, that sees play anyway, like consistently, and then you just improve upon it, slant home run. 1-1 one, one for 1. It gets plus 1, plus 1 as long as it's attacking. So it's, it's just another 2-1 one for 1 because that's just how... Magic just wants to find as many, as many ways to make 2-1s for 1 as they can. That's just their goal. Like... Uh, I was going to say, like, Toolcraft Exemplar, but that guy's actually a 3-2 for one, so whatever. Um, yeah, anyway. Eh, what are you going to do? It's a 2-1 for one, whatever. <laughs> Gruesome Fate. Three mana. Each opponent loses one life for each creature you control. This is actually... I think this is going to kill some people. <laughs> if you got the vampire deck and you're going super wide and you got, like, eight vampires... This is just going to deal 8 to their face. If you have 2 of these in your hand, you just deal them 16. And I'm talking about constructed even. Like, depending on how wide you can go with vampires, like, this could be dirty, dude. 1 damage for each creature you control. Yeah, you could just be like, uh, I got what, I got 6 vampires. Are right, you take, take 6. Take 6 more. Okay, well, that's rough. That's brutal. Take 6 more. Okay, I'm dead. I get it. What do you want from me? Yeah, I don't know. This is this is a card that's extremely dependent on the archetypes it can fit into. Even for pirates, though, like if it depends on how wide you're going with these decks. And uh, this could just give you that extra reach that you need. The problem is, uh, if you have six creatures on board, is this a win more? I don't know. It doesn't target, though, and it is all opponents. So in EDH, you're like, you, 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 you all take eight, whatever, how many? Um, the problem is that, like, if they fumigate... This card does nothing, right? So this is a very, like, it's you're at that crossroads of, like, it's win more, and it's also dependent on how many creatures you have 
And the more creatures you have, which is great, the stronger it is, right? Um, one interesting thing is that, like, you might not want to give them that last attack step. Like, I'll, all right, I'll attack you for eight. I'll put you to, to, to six or whatever, and then I'll just deal you the last points. So, you know, I mean, it's possible to... To seal the deal and just make sure you kill them on the spot with this card because it's the same as like having burn um, in a lot of situations, except that it is dependent on your creatures, which makes it a little more suspect. So, I don't know. I like it though. <sighs> Hold on, we're going to do something. I'm just going to make myself into that guy from Pan's Labyrinth right now. Because that's more interesting to me than this card. Mastermind's Acquisition. Two black black. I like this card a lot. Choose one. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Too, <laughs> too spooky. Too spooky for you. All right. Uh, yeah, this is just such a better demonic tutor. Like, okay, so here we have a card where you're like, all right, impale. It's literally murder, except it costs one more mana. And it's a sorcerer instead of an instant. Because every my biggest concern with the card murder was that it was just way too powerful. I was like... I could kill any creature with this murder and it only cost me three mana and it doesn't do anything else whatsoever and they can still regenerate and it doesn't kill indestructible creatures and it doesn't exile them and it doesn't kill planeswalkers but it just kills any basic creature for three mana at instant speed. I can't handle this. So I'm really glad they fixed that. Um, but then you have Mastermind's Acquisition which is basically Diabolic Tutor. So basically, search your library for a card, put it in your hand, and shuffle your library. Literally Diabolic Tutor. But then you have the choose a card you own from outside the game and put it in your hand. It's a Diabolic Tutor plus a Wish, which is awesome. So you can get literally, you bring your 75 card deck to whatever event you're in, or even in Limited, you can pull a card from your sideboard. You're like, man, I'm glad I drafted that, that enchantment removal in my sideboard. I'm going to play Mastermind's Acquisition, get my enchantment removal, and kill your enchantment, right? So... This card is just great. Like if you if you roll up to any event with seven, look at these look at these weird these weird Pan's Labyrinth nipples on my hand now. It's not good. Um so yeah, if you if you just um roll up to any event with your 75 75 cards and you got Mastermind's acquisition in there, you can pull any card out of that 75. That's I I think that's cool. It it does cost 4, but you can get any card out of your sideboard. So, like, rolling up and being like, let me get my rest in peace out of my sideboard. That's huge. Yeah, grab a scavenging grounds from the board against... Grab a, a life gain card. Like, the the fact that, like, four mana is... I think four mana is substantially less when you're actually getting so many relevant sideboard cards. It's huge. I like this card a lot. It's cool. I don't like this card very much. I like this card. Mausoleum Harpy, five mana for a three-three flyer with ascend. Uh, whenever look at <laughs> I could not laugh at that. Uh, whenever another creature you control dies, if you have the city's blessing, <laughs> like, I don't know, it was funnier to me than you guys, I guess. Whenever another creature dies, you control. If you have the city's blessing, put a plus one plus one counter on Mausoleum Harpy. This is like, this is just the next in a long line of creatures um, that get counters when other things die. Only, this only happens when you have the city's blessing, so. Okay. I mean, I'll play this in limited 100% of the time. I'm not going to play any of this in constructed ever. Target creature gets, this is also a really impressive card. Because it's funny because you have um, the impale card. Which is literally just a worse murder. But then you have this, which is just a strictly better douse in gloom. That was real loud. Did you hear that? 
Douse in Gloom, as he looks it up. Douse in Gloom is a three mana instant that deals two damage to target creature and you gain two life. Look at that. See, I even I don't even know how I got this far. Oh, moment. Yeah, okay. This is target creature gets negative two, negative two, and you gain two life. So this is almost better. This card's great. I think this is awesome. Like, it's two mana, but you gain two life. Gaining two life on a removal spell is just great. Kill the red guy, gain two life. Cool. This is just better than Dowsing Gloom, I think. It's not strictly better, because sometimes you want damage over negative two, negative two. Um, I'm really, I'm really uh, conservative with my use of strictly better, because I think people overuse that phrase. And I think it doesn't apply to all the situations people think it applies to. But that's another story. Um... But yeah, so you have a card like Douse and Gloom. This is better than Douse and Gloom. You have a card like Murder. Impale is worse than Murder. And uh, I like this card a lot. I can I can definitely see this making uh, an appearance in Constructed Decks. So. Freak is Cure. Yes, that is the best comparison. Okay. But Freak is Cure is also double black, right? It's two black. So I think that's just better than Freak is Cure at one, one and a B. Oh, Sworn Vampire. 2-2 two, two for 2. It's an uncommon. I'm getting excited. Enters the battlefield tapped. Look out. Look at this saucy gentleman. You may cast Oh, Sworn Vampire from your graveyard if you gain life this turn. This card seems great. Um... Yeah, this card seems great. I like this card a lot. Enters the battlefield tapped. You can cast it from your graveyard if you gain life this turn. Sure. Cool. Nope, definitely not better than... Moment of Craving is definitely not better than The Cure. That is correct. Uh, Robert Smith is... Uh, it goes Robert Smith, Moment of Craving. That's that's what I think. This card seems awesome. Um, I think this is definitely going in the Vampire deck. Gain a life, cast this dude from a graveyard. 2-2 two, two for 2. Sure. Pitiless Plunderer. Arg, as, as a pirate would say. Oh, the next card's going to be miserable. Uh, four mana for a 1-4. Whenever another creature you control dies, create a token. This is basically the opposite of Sailor of Memes. Sailor of Memes is a 1-4 for 3 that makes a token, or a treasure. This is a 1-4 for 4 that whenever a dude dies makes a, makes a treasure. So, I mean, I'll play this in limited 100% of the time almost. I'll probably never play this in standard, I don't think. Ravenous Chupacabra. Two black black. A 2-2... Two, two, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. Um, Patrick Sullivan actually made a, a pretty big rant about this card recently, and I, I, I agree with his points. Uh, he made the point that this is not an interactive card whatsoever. Like, a lot of times you have a card like Necrotal that kills a non-black, non-artifact creature. So you're safe playing artifact and black creatures. Or, you know, you have a card like uh, Noxious Gearhulk that costs six mana. Um... You know, and you have all these cards that have different different stipulations on what they can or can't kill. And this dude is just like kill any creature whatsoever. So it's just very, very good. Like I'm like, why would you ever play in pale for four mana when you have this card for four mana that also has a two-two? You can also blink this guy. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. And uh just being able to kill anything is really, really frustrating, especially because we did look at that that seven mana blue card that I was really excited about, and then you play this guy and you just try to kill it. And I, I, I can I can exile it. I can discard three cards and exile it, but you're basically three for wanting me, right? And that's not cool. So I don't know. I mean, I guess you could do the same thing with a Shriek Maw. Shriek Maw costs five. Necrotal, you can do the same thing with Necrotal, but. Necrotal still has other restrictions on it. And I don't know. This is this card's very strong. And yes, the other the other thing is that Scarab God is in the format. So you are able to reanimate this as a 4-4 four, four for 4 that kills any creature on board. I don't know. This card scares me, and uh, I think the black decks are gonna be a little strong. So we'll see. Reaver ambush. Three mana exile a creature with power three. Or less. Um, what's the closest cor cor corollary to this? Um, Reeve Soul? Is that what it's called? Let's see. Uh, 
Reeve Soul. Where, yeah, Reeve Soul is destroy a creature with power three or less for two mana. This is exile a creature with power three or less for three mana. Um, so yeah, very similar. It costs one more mana. This is also instant where Reeve Soul is a sorcery, but the exile could be very relevant. Um, this is a removal spell where like you don't actually always want to pay three mana for it, but sometimes the format deems it so. Like I know there was definitely a point where we were playing. Uh, What's the... Tell me the uh, Battle for Zendikar version of this card that that exiled the card. Tell me what that is. I forgot what it was. I need some help. And I don't want to look it up. I will. I'll do it. But I don't want to. Anyway. Um, yeah, this card's not exciting. It's It's an uncommon. Complete disregard. That's what it was. And complete disregard was... Yeah, exile a creature with power three or less. It's literally just complete disregard. Okay, so two and a black, two and a black. Okay. So it's literally complete disregard. Uh, except for this is a black card. Complete disregard was a devoid card. It had no color. So, yeah, that, like that, that's what I was getting at. There are situations where uh, complete disregard did see play because you just needed that extra removal against certain decks. Uh, it was rare, and I don't think standards in a format right now where you're going to need that. But... I'm still going to like having this in the arsenal. I like having this as an option in my sideboard for, um, you know, for, for decks if you need them. If you need to be able to exile a creature with power three or less, you got it. It's there for you. We, we got you covered. Re, we got you recovered. That's a little segue there. We got you, we got you recovered. Uh, three mana, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand, draw a card. This is a black. This is as close as you're going to get to a black divination outside of uh, something like Read the Bones or any one of those infinite Read the Bones reprints. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, draw you draw two cards, essentially, at so long as you have a creature worth getting back in your graveyard, and I think that's just fine. Um, I don't see... If you're, if you're playing a black control deck, you're probably also playing blue, so I don't see why you'd be playing this. But I don't think it's a bad card, and I think this is actually a fine card in limited. So, constructed, not really sold on it. Has never cards like this, which there have been many, uh, never really saw play before. But as as far as just the value goes, I don't think it's terrible. So, uh, sadistic sky marcher two two for three. Okay, it's flying and life link as initial cost to cast it. Reveal a vampire or pay one. So this is just a Silvergill adept for vampires. This card's actually pretty good, though. A 2-2 flying lifelinker for three is is not bad. I think this guy's pretty good. So, it's yeah, it's, it's a combination of, like, Silvergill adept and Vampire Nighthawk, right? So Vampire Nighthawk is a 2-3 with flying and lifelink and death touch. This has one less toughness, so it does die to the, uh, the previous neg-2, neg-2 card. Uh, Vampire Nighthawk, you also didn't have to pay an extra mana or reveal a vampire. And you also had Death Touch. So three three very distinct differences. This does cost one less black, and I think it's good enough in a standard environment that doesn't have Vampire Nighthawk, but um, I think it's good enough. And I'm, you're 100% going to play this in limited. If you, if you can open this guy in limited, like, just go to town. Tetsamok Primal Death. Six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. This was one of the cards that was spoiled uh, very, very early in the Rivals of Zendikar. Rivals of Ixalan. <laughs> Rivals of Zendikar. hi -oh! Rivals of Ixalan uh, spoiler season. This was like one of the first two cards. So it's a 6-6 six, six with Death Touch. You can tap a black and reveal it to put a prey counter on target creature. Activate this only during your turn. So you can go three black, prey counter, prey counter, prey counter. Your turn. On their turn, they play a guy. You cannot then tap a black and put a prey counter on that guy before their end of the turn, right? So you have to wait till your turn. So if you want to kill anything that they just played and still play Tetsamok, you have to have seven mana. So you can reveal it and then play it that turn, uh, which is interesting. And the, the you know what we're talking about is when Tetsamok enters the battlefield, destroy each creature your opponent's control with a prey counter on it. Um, so you can set it up so that like you got three guys, I'll put prey counters on all of them. 
if your opponent plays a creature, it's either not going to die when you play Tetsamok on your turn, or you have to have more than six mana in order to kill that one as well, which is interesting. It gives you a kind of like, it's an interesting tension where like, do you want to play this on six or do you want to kill all of their guys? And you can never kill all of their guys um, unless they stop playing them and you have to wait till at least turn seven. But on turn seven, you theoretically should be able to play. If they, what if they, if, I mean, if they play three guys, if you reveal Tetsamok and go guy, 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 and they go play three guys, and then it's your turn again, you can put three more counters on their guys, but then you're still not going to be able to play until next turn. So even on turn seven, like you'd only be able to put one counter and then kill all their guys, and then they keep two guys. The math for this is very interesting. Because they only let you do it on your turn, so you can't spend excess mana on their turn. Does that make sense? You guys know what I'm saying there? And and that's interesting. Uh, I still think this card is very powerful. Like, it, let's presume you don't have to kill all the creatures with it. If you're just able to go turn five, counter, 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 keep an essence scatter up. Three counters and an essence scatter. Counter whatever you play. That's a lot of counters. Counter, counter, counter. Counter what you play. <laughs> and then turn six, play it, and then kill their three guys um that's a lot like that's a lot of things so um yeah i could see this and also your guys don't die it only kills the creatures they it's interesting because it says primal put a prey counter on target creatures so you can put it on any creature including your own but then it says only destroy creatures your opponents control with a prey counter why not let you kill your own guys that doesn't make sense to me that seems like a weird like that seems like a really weird distinction. Like, I feel like it takes away some interaction where you can, like, combo with it and kill, like, one. Like, I want my guy in the graveyard. But it doesn't seem, like, broken enough. It's not like, oh, man, if you were to kill your own guys. um, I guess one thing is if you both, if you and your opponent both have Tetsamok and your opponent's like, okay, I'll put prey counters on your guys, too, so that they die when you cast your own Tetsamok. Right, so... That seems more fair almost. That seems like, oh, wow, that's a great counterplay. So I feel like you almost want that to happen so that, like, I don't know. I don't think that's worse, though. I don't think that's a worse ability. I think that actually gives you a nice little counterplay there. But, I mean, the card still seems interesting. Um, I think the card is definitely powerful. Like I said, like I like this, this Elder Dinosaur a lot. I think it's a really unique ability and it's really strong. I think the blue one has, a, has like a bunch of text and it's really strong. And then the white one is just kind of like, all right, you just got a bunch of keywords. Yeah. But what are you going to do? Sometimes you get, sometimes you just get some, some boring old dummies. Tomb Robber, Tomb Raider. Three mana for a 1-1 one, one with Menace. All right, discard a card, Tomb Raider Explorers. Okay, so for three mana, I get a 1-1. One, one. And then I get to pay one more mana. So for four mana, I get to discard a card. And then I get to explore, which might not even get me a card. It might just put a counter on this guy. That's not going to do it for me. For four mana, I may have a 2-2. Two, two, and I discard... For four mana and discard a card, I may have a 2-2. Two, two. For three mana... For four mana, or I might have a 1-1, one, one, and I discard a card and replace it with a land. Yeah, this is terrible. This card is not good. Twilight Prophet, this card I think is very good. Four mana for a 2-4 flyer. We've, we've been here before. We've seen this. Uh, we've already spent too much time talking about this card. Correct, but I wanted to make sure I got it right, so I agree with you. Uh, Twilight Prophet, four mana... Uh, at, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have the City's Blessing, reveal the top card of your library, put it into your hand. Each opponent, this is like a reverse Dark Confidant, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the card's converted mana cost. So if you draw a four mana spell, if you draw another Twilight Prophet, you gain four, they lose four, and you've drawn a card. This card is great, and I would love putting this in any vampire deck uh, that can easily uh, trigger Ascend. So that's cool. This card's great. Uh, I think this card would be busted as a 4-4 flyer for 4 that also Dark Confidants. Like, this card should not be a 4-4, I do not think. I think that's a little too powerful. Uh, but I like this card a lot. I think the ability is very, very strong. Vampire or Revenant. 4 mana for a 3-1 flyer. Okay. 
Oh, I guess I accidentally hit the button that advanced to the next card. Vana's Hunger. Three mana. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you have the City's Blessing, instead each opponent sacrifices half the creatures he controls round he or she controls rounded up. Yeah, you guys are also taking into, into consideration. You know, you guys are also evaluating cards. You said ascend in standard, you die before ascend against energy. You guys also are under the impression that nothing is going to happen to energy come Monday, um, which I don't think is the case. So I'm I'm evaluating these under the impression that ascend is probably not going to be as, or, or uh, that energy is probably not going to be as dominant as you may think. Uh, this card seems great though. Uh, they sacrifice a dude. Each opponent sacrifices a dude. Uh, this is very much the the s s to the slaughter of the set, and uh, has uh, for a three mana instant that makes your opponent sacrifice half their creatures for three mana is pretty good. Yeah, there's a ban and restriction announcement on Monday. Um, so here's the thing: Wizards wrote an article recently, and I want you guys to just consider this. They wrote an article, and it was called block monsters and how we avoid them right and the the thumbnail was uh road refiner and they're talking about energy and then they they go on to say aaron tweeted that after the banner restricted announcement is monday with aaron tweeted uh that the bnr announcement is on monday and that there will be no no modern changes but he didn't mention standard changes. He didn't say there's not going to be any modern or standard changes. He just said there's going to be no modern changes. So it makes sense that based on uh, the fact that he specified s exclusively that there's no modern changes and that they, they also printed an article about how energy is a block monster, um, it, it makes sense that they're going to try to limit the power level of the energy decks. That's just my two cents. Voracious Vampire. The final the final black card. This dude is literally eating from a dinosaur, which is it's a real weird. It's a, I don't I'm not comfortable with it. Two two for three with menace. When it enters the battlefield, target vampire gets plus two, plus two and gains plus one plus one and gains menace until end of turn, sure. Uh you'll apply this unlimited. It's a two two with menace, which is great. And it's got an ability. Um how will they make people play standard again if they ban energy? Um, I mean, people are just going to play standard. <laughs> it's not really... It's, I mean, they're not going to stop playing standard because the tune with Aether gets banned. They're just going to play a, a more fair deck and their 50 cent common will go back to their box, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I don't think... I think people overstate the fact that no one's going to like... No one has these these $600,000 magic collections that they're going to be like, I give up, and then they're just going to stop playing because Wizards is doing what they can to balance formats and make them more more balanced um i just think that i think that's overstated um there is this there seems to be does seem to be what do you think the most effective and least disruptive way to fix energy uh get rid of some energy cards <laughs> that's literally what i think it does uh i think it comes down to like maybe a tune maybe long tusk cub maybe rogue refiner uh maybe even aether hub so you know i mean like yeah, I think, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I think more people will start playing standard. Like, I haven't played standard in quite a few weeks, but if they ban energy and I know that all the crazy decks that I can play with are going to be more viable, I will start playing standard. So you have more people like this who are more able to play standard when they're not playing seven rounds of various energy decks at their standard FNMs. How many rounds are their standard FNMs? I don't know if they're playing seven rounds against standard. Probably 10 round FNMs. I don't know. It seems like a lot, but that's not my FNM. What do I know? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this The Black Set Review. Really appreciate it. You guys have been awesome. Uh, be sure to click those like and subscribe buttons down there. And be sure to check out the other uh, the other set reviews for Rivals Vixalon. And I'll catch you guys next time.